to let the Lord carry us. No more striving, no more struggling. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. Hello friends, welcome to Practical Christianity episode 12. One two as we are looking at equation today so we're going to be getting you know doing some mathematical stuff today anyway it's great to be here how was your week uh, mine was um mine was okay you know the weeks is is just becoming like uh like the same thing week in week out you know you wake up um you start um your work you know you're trying not to sit all the time you know hey, in the in the um, in front of your laptop and um, you finish your meeting you eat then it's night then you start it all over again um yeah so it's been 
similar, I would say. But we thank the Lord, even in all things, we are to praise and give God all the glory. So I'm very happy um, to be here. I'm very happy to be alive. And one sad thing that happened um, during the week, um, for me, we um we lost one of our um, university mates and um the funeral and all that was during the week and that that was really sad um <clears throat> i saw um the guy last on zoom in i think it was in november last year full of life and energy and you know it just got me thinking about you know this life this life this life we must not waste this life. Every minute, every second is very important, you know, and, and that is why for me, I, I don't play with time right now. I don't play with time because there's so much to be done. And so, you know, um, we have to plan to make an impact to be purposeful in how we spend our time and so you know i i really would not uh, entertain people that you know you you just don't you know manage time well um and yeah that's that's just for me so now you know my one hour is my one hour my one hour is not one and a half hours and because time is just going um so fast so today i'm so excited we are going to be we're looking at equation of life for good success you know this um, practical christianity if you are watching it for the first time is a program where i share how i live out faith basically to encourage to motivate to inspire you and you know to ultimately ultimately to give god all the glory and to you know uh, um, hopefully you know turn people to christ or turn people back to christ that is the overall goal you know um and and it's a program where it's led by the holy spirit i don't i and it's done every week I don't have the topic for every week all here written down. I just wait for the Holy Spirit to tell us what we need to do. And this one, you know, I am um, during the week, the Holy Spirit um, um, put that in my mind around, you know, looking at um, the life of Joshua, you know, um, and, you know, I, I'll come to that in a few minutes. But, you know, one of the things that God did with Joshua was to encourage him. Um, after Moses died and, and he told God told him this is what you must do for good and you will be prosperous and successful and so that was how the, the um, sort of idea for this from the Holy Spirit but the content actually you know I, I didn't have the content until the Holy Spirit you know um, gave me the content actually you know um, yesterday and today uh, but the only thing that I knew was that I was going to be around looking at different aspects of our life and how should that lead to um, success. So um, we're going to be looking at, you know, um, some of the variables and we're going to be, you know, bringing, you know, using Joshua's life as a case study. And then I'll, I'll, I'll share practically because we want, you know, this to be, this has to be practical. There's no point saying we're Christians, you know, we're born again Christians and we're not the light in our world and we're not the salt because we're not able to, you know, to, you know, manifest all the blessings and the fantastic things that God has promised us in our daily life. And, and so for me, this is what practical Christianity is about. Don't just tell me you are, you are um, I, um, Jude, I, Messi. Don't just tell me that you are a Christian and I, I see your life and I'm wondering, really? You know, so, um, so this is what this is about. So um, we, we give God all the glory. And before I start, um, the, the song we were listening to is from an amazing young lady called Taiwo. Please buy it. Um, that was a single called Carry Me. 
um, it's on all the online you know uh, uh, music download platform um, carry me by Taiwo dot music so please you know uh, um, um, buy it is so powerful she's so so tal um, anointed we say talented in the world so in, in christendom is, is gifted anointed we thank the lord so um the case study of joshua joshua chapter one we um there's so many things that it's so loaded from verse seven to nine and um again you know i'm just going to pick out some of the key or uh, some of the exciting things that god told Josh, um, joshua um, um god told him be strong and courageous right in verse 9 have i not commanded you be strong and of good courage do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go and part of the passage as well god says be, be careful to obey all the instructions moses gave you do not deviate from it turn it to the left or to the right then you will be successful in everything you do study this book of instruction continually meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do so god already gave us some you know important variables for good success and and, and um, prosperity you know so um one of the let's let's look at you know the life of moses and um, joshua for example joshua was from the tribe of ephraim you know ephraim was from the lineage of joshua um, um, um joseph joseph had to sons um ephraim and manasseh and they became you know the son 11 and 12 of the of the 12 tribes of israel um joshua was born in egypt we know that he came out he was in in the wilderness you know and so he must have he definitely was born in um i said julie definitely was born in egypt and he was a young man during the wilderness years you know because it was um he, he was not counted among the elders in the wilderness you know when moses was choosing the head of head of um, families and the 70 elders to delegate authority to joshua was not part of that them um, those people so he must have been younger but what we also know was that um, Joshua was the one that led the fight against the Amalekite, and based I start booking, and based on the um, the um, instructions from God that only the the young men twenty years and above would be part of the you know army of Israel. So it is you know um, logical to um, propose um, that Joshua was age at least age 20 and above because he could lead the the army um, um the israelites against the amalekite and we know that you know by the time they came out of the wilderness it would have been definitely over 40 years <laughs> so I, I, at the time they came out maybe it was around 60 or, or or so years if we were to assume it was 20. so when because he was born in egypt so he would have seen all the all the uh, all the miracles the signs and wonders that god did against the egyptian so he, he, he would have seen that and we also know that he became moses assistant in the wilderness exodus 33 11 he was referred to as moses assistant and not only was he referred to as moses assistant he was referred to as one of his choice men in numbers eleven twenty eight. so it was you know we could um say that he was a very hard-working young man he was you know a follower you know uh, we we read in when you look at read the story of the israelite how he followed moses to the mountain he stayed on the mountain how you know whenever 
Moses go, went into the tabernacle, he will, he will go with him and then he would even s um, sleep in, in the front of the tabernacle all night. So this was a man that, you know, in every area he, was, he had the fear of God. He, you know, he was studying from Moses, you know, it was also dedicated. And we know he, he, he trusted God because when he and Caleb went to, uh, uh, with the um, 12 spies, went to spy Canaan. He and Caleb, uh, mm -hmm. Caleb were the only ones that actually said, who are these people are cockroach? You know, we can, we, we, you know, let's go and destroy them because their protection has gone. You know, so he was, he was somebody that trusted in the Lord. And eventually he was chosen as the, as, as the successor of Moses. You know, God chose him. Moses anointed him, you know, um, before he died. It was it was done. It was it was done in front of all the Israelites, and he was also given some responsibility as well before Moses died. But can you imagine after Moses died? You know, Moses' shoe was very big, a big shoe um, to fill, and I, I I think that was why God was you know kept you know uh, um, encouraging him to be you know um, strong and of good courage and in fact when you look at that our you know um, um joshua 1 7 to 9 god re kept repeating it be strong and very courageous be strong and of good courage so god was you know really encouraging him encouraging him about you know the the work that he was uh, meant to do and what what is the other thing that we can learn from the life of joshua Joshua, this, um, his, Joshua's purpose was very clear to lead the Israelites into the promised land. He was not the one that led the Israelites out of Egypt into the promised land, but he was the one that took them into the promised land. And his life after Moses died was in military, in, 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 in wars. So throughout, you know, I think it was recorded maybe 31 words or something. He was, you know, a, a man that, you know, a military man. So he was, you know, he was, the, he was always um, out um, um, leading the Israelites into war. So one could say that Joshua's own purpose was to lead the Israelites into the promised land, you know, and he spent his life claiming the land of Cana and distributing it to the Israelites. So what are some of the things that we can learn? We are talking about the equation of life. You know, um, last week I was, um, as I was um, reflecting on this and, and just meditating on it, and I was talking to my daughters, one of them is an accountant and she, she's, uh, she is a mathematician. You know, she's very good. So I said, you know, what would be the equation if we were to look at good success, what would be like the, the, the sort of equation? And if we turn that into, into for example, if number two is like, uh, or let me choose number five. If five is good, represent good success, what would be the different combination? I think I learned, I had a reminder of parentheses and, and algebra and all that. And so we, we, we started experimenting mm -hmm. that, okay, mm -hmm. if we want to get to five, you could have combination of one plus three plus two, one plus three plus one, mm -hmm. right? You could have one plus two plus two. You could have two plus three. You could have five divided by one. You could have five times one. You know, the, you, can, you can have different you know, combination, you will get to five. And I was thinking, so where would God come in? Where would God come in? Because, you know, if I do one plus two plus two, that means that each is a variable on its own. And you can't just say, okay, maybe God would be, you know, a variable. And then you have all the other variables. It just did not, it did not make sense to me. And Eventually, I think as we were, you know, just, you know, sharing and, and, and then we came to coefficient and I said, yes, that is it. You know, for 
uh, if you've forgotten your maths, coefficient is when you multiply a, a constant with a variable. So if, for example, you have a times b plus a times c plus a times d, for example, so the b, c, d are variables and the a is constant. And I, I was like, yes, that is it. I think that is it. So God will be the constant. So our, the variable of our life, oh, well, let me use my life as an example. Uh, so the variable of my life is, you know, family, f uh, ministry, career, friends, you know, if we stop at four, for example, those four. And, and then, so those are the variables. So it would be God times family, God times career, God times ministry. So God will be the coefficient because we, if we were to take God out of that, any of that, there's no way we will achieve good success. So, so maybe if you are watching, what would be your own equation, you know, um, for your life? For me, we must, uh, you know, I must have God as the coefficient of every variable of life because, you know, life is full of so many variables because things change. Family, you know, your children, my daughter is going to be, my eldest daughter is going to be moving out soon. And I think I'm, I'm having withdrawal symptoms at the moment <laughs> because I'm like, it's not go going to be the same and what we i'm so grateful you know the for since march nearly a year we have been together even before march for for my elder she you know she had surgery on her foot before the lockdown so from january a year we've been together and it's been fantastic you know i've had to move from you know another level you know, in my relationship with my daughter, okay, I'm digressing a little bit here. You know, when they were, before they went off to uni, then when they went off to uni, that was another, that was another thing. You know, for me, I had to get used to that. Then they came home and then you have to get used to it, like they are now young adults, you know. And and so this past year has been fa fantastic. So I'm, I'm in a bit withdrawal symptom. She's not yet gone yet, you know, but anyway, we're going to ex expand it. But the good thing is that she's, mo she's moving not too far from, from us, which is, which is fantastic. So as I was saying, so things change. So all, you know, even career, you change career. Hi, Stanike, Sir Julie. Yeah, God is the constant in our life. We change careers. But so if, so God has to be in whichever career we're going, whether it's a ministry, God has to be. So I see God as a coefficient, you know, in the variables of our life for good success. And we can see that if we look at the case study of Joshua, if you look at the case study of Joshua, you know, uh, God was in every detail of Joshua's life, you know, uh, and in, in Joshua 1, 2, when God told him that it's time for you to lead these people and he made a promise, I will be with you, you know, these people shall be nothing, you know, so God was the director he was, he was the one that, you know, um, um, showed when, why, how. He was the one that strategized. Joshua followed. And you know, the two times, the two times that God was taken out of the equation, I, the battle with I, because Joshua felt, you know, they've done Jericho. So now, you know, I is nothing. Let's just go. He did not consult the Lord. And so God was quiet. Baba, this Baba God, you know, I just love him so much. He said, okay, yeah, go ahead. So they went and they were trashed by a small, tiny eye. And then he went to ask the Lord and God told him. The second time he took God out of the equation was when it concerned the people of Gibeah. Even the Bible says that they did not seek the Lord's counsel, Joshua 9, 1. They just saw these people coming in very, you know, looking tattered and they believed everything they were saying. So we cannot afford to take God out of the equation 
of our life in every area. That is what I have learned. Everything. God has to be there. God has to be there. And I would like to, you know, give, share with you an, a, a, a one practical experience because this is practical Christianity. Mm -hmm. So God gave me the idea for We Can Leadership Institute um, about 10 um, I think 12 years ago, um, mm -hmm. which was really just an umbrella for me to be able to um, do all the work that God wanted me to do. And it started from a point where I was always, um, I, I, in, in 20, 2008, I was asking the question, what is my purpose? I knew that, you know, um, I have to work. I mean, God has work for me to do. And, you know, that is another story. And so I was like, so what, what exactly is my purpose? And through my spiritual mentor and through um, a coach, a personal coach, I was taking a, a coach um, um, course at that time to become a coach myself. And I had to answer the question, so where do you see yourself in five years? And so that got me thinking. And I said, my ideal life will be where I'm able to teach and empower others, right? And so the lady said, so what's stopping you? That w And she asked, where can you start from? You know, uh, and I was like, okay, you know, um, from my career life, I, I know areas of my strength, you know, things that I do a lot because, and I do well because I always get, you know, um, excellent rating. You know, I've had feedback that I develop people, I empower people. You know, um, it's, it's really interesting that I learned that in the circular, but thank the Lord I've brought it into the mm -hmm. kingdom um, work. Anyway, so so I started thinking about, okay, how can I, so how can I bring that into the Christendom, you know, into the church? And, and you know, one of the suggestions was I can start doing training. You know, I can just start doing some leadership training you know, in the church. And um, I spoke to my spiritual mentor then, and one of the things she advised me then was, you know, don't do it alone. You know, get other people who are like-minded and may uh, collaborate. And that is, you know, a sound, you know, um, insight and, and wisdom she's given me, you know, all those years ago. And so I, you know, I had some friends who were also Christians. I shared the idea that I would like to be doing, you know, leadership training in the church. And I discovered Matthew 5, you know, 11 to 14 um, at that time. So I went to my pastor um, and I have to say, you know, my pastor then, I'm, I'm not going to mention their name because, you know, um, to, to just give them their privacy, they, they were... You know, now I look back, I had seven years with them, seven fantastic years with them. I didn't know till I left, you know, I didn't know. But I went to my pastor and said, you know, I'll, this, this is my mind. I would just like to, you know, be sharing, uh, um, be doing, you know, um, training on soft skills because I couldn't see, you know, I was seeing some gaps. And, and so I said, can I you know, maybe use the church on a Saturday for a couple of hours, you know, I will bring people, you know, I will be doing training. So we did training on goal setting, vision, you know, um, getting the right jobs, communication skills. And my pastor was, oh, God bless his name. I was like, yes. You know, so they gave me the church. So we were using the church auditorium. Of course, we invited, you know, they will, will even add, um, announce it in church, you know, the training. And my pastor and his wife, you know, and the ministers of God will attend the training. They will attend the training. And, and you know, the time when they, they are not able to attend, they will even be apologizing. I've not, since that time, since that time, you know, it's only very few that I've experienced. And, and so we started, you know, the training in the church. And then God said that, you know, we should, you know, start taking it outside as an evangelistic, you know, um, event. So we started organizing, 
like a women's seminar in the community. You know, we'll, we'll look at an issue affecting the community um, and um, we'll bring a speaker to come and give us knowledge and insight, uh, insight about that issues. Because one of the things that was very clear at that time was that the, you know, people, Christian in the church do not necessarily know some things. And, and so, you know, we need to gain knowledge so that we can, you know, as, as, as a Christian start, you know, addressing those issues. So that was how Total Women Leadership um, Breakfast Seminar was birthed in 2010 by the grace of God. And, and so we, we, uh, we um, organized breakfast seminars. So we, we address issues, for example, living it with HIV and AIDS. We brought, you know, a woman that's been at that time, she'd been living with it for, I think, 10 years. You know, she looked fantastic, better than most of us. We, we, we brought a, a gender and um, domestic violence expert to come and talk about gender based violence, you know, and, and it was, that session was quite interesting because even you know, pastors' wives that were in that breakfast meeting were saying that if, when people come to them about domestic violence, they don't know what to do, you know, because the, the, the default is just it is well, you know, fast and pray, you know. Meanwhile, somebody is being abused. You know, we, we brought business women to come and talk to us. We brought somebody to talk, come and talk about child exploitation, you know, th those things that we think it doesn't happen in the church. But, you know, when we start digging down, you know, when you have your, you know, children's uh, um, class and, you know, the, the brother getting, you know, young girls to sit on their lap and, you know, they are doing all those rubbish things. And, and we are not, you know, we, we're not giving... You know, do people working with children any training? Yes, I, I, I know the Bible is there, but the reality is our our um, level of spiritual maturity is different. I can I could not recollect anywhere at that time when we were given training, you know, on, on, on working with children. So we started doing all that. And I, I just want to also mention my pastor's wife when i shared the fact that i wanted to be doing the the um, um, women's breakfast i you know she was supportive 101 percent this sister will come to the breakfast seminar anytime we i think if we were doing it i think it was once a month then she will come when she can come she will be apolog she will apologize to mrs sadiola i'm so sorry i couldn't attend i did not get any question around why are you doing women's program you know in, in um outside you know you are going to take all our women with us um to you this is, there was nothing like that i was so supported so as as the as we were doing the training and doing the program and we started expanding you know they then we there was a time when you know and the, the feeling around, okay, now we've been doing this for a couple of years, you know, um, when we have our uh, breakfast seminar, instead of 20 people, we should be having 50 people, you know, we should, you know, we should now be growing, we should be expanding, you know, and that was when the feeling around, you know, things that we need to do to attract more people came in. And I learned three things I've I, I learned during that time. You will have doubt, you know, especially when you're saying, oh, you know, you are, we're not seeing exponential growth. You will start having doubt. Was I called to do this? And the second thing is you know, will start looking for alternative. You know, we start looking for alternative. Maybe we should do this. Maybe we should advertise this. Maybe we should, you know, do less God and make it, you know, more secular, you know, uh, um, uh, um, program and, or, or uh, more secular title. And the third thing was maybe give up, you know, at different times I was throughout, I was doing, I was moving in, in those three areas, you know, but by the grace of God, I, I didn't get to the level of 
holding on to giving up. No, you know, because God helped me. One of the things that I kept, you know, reminding myself was why was I doing this in the first place? What exactly was the purpose of what I was doing and why? And once I realized that the reason why I was doing this was because of God, right? Not because of me. I was not doing this to make money, to sell a product, to sell a service, but to empower people for God. To empower people of God first and to empower people who do not know God so that they can start asking, who is my God? And want to know God. So everything started falling into place. Everything started falling into, into place. But it wasn't a one, it wasn't that suddenly I, I got to understand that it took a while. It was a journey. But the the one thing that was constant was that this is about God. Again, that coefficient, you know, aspect of uh, the variables of life that this was about God. And there was no way I could do what I was doing without God. And I learned that if God was in it, you know, it does not matter. It does not matter whether, you know, um, every year it's five people, it's ten people. The impact that one is making in the life of one person is enough. The impact in one person is enough. Maybe that is also one's purpose that you make an impact in the life of one person and that one person goes to make an impact in the life of others. So over the years with people that worked with me, you know, to carry the vision, I'm always reminding, you know, that it is not about the numbers. You know, it's very easy to start focusing on you know the numbers when you are you know uh, or you know things that are material so it is not about the numbers and also understanding that i do not own we can god is the ceo of we can if we you know i try as much as possible to put um god there as the ceo i'm just deputy ceo i do not own you know we can so um and i also read in the bible that you know uh, jesus christ thanking god that those that god has given him is not lost anyone so so that means that when jesus christ was alive there might there were some people that you know were not part of that carcass so you know i learned to understand that you know god has given me some people people who are meant who are meant to be salt in their life and that was enough for me. So that helped me. So now I don't care. Whatever I do, I, I don't care the numbers. Even, you know, on, on this platform as well. Thank you, the six people, seven people that are watching. It is because God wanted you to be here. So it's about God. And the, the other thing I learned as well is about pride. Pride. Because when you start doing something, you start thinking it's by your hand. You know, you start thinking, you know, it's about me. And and it's when, you know, I, I started getting into that space of, you know, I'm doing this, you know, it's about, you know, it's what I'm bringing in that the Holy Spirit helped me to say, be careful be careful you know uh, it's no matter what no matter what people say about you no matter how people you know honor you or elevate you or anything like that never ever ever take you know the glory for that and i also learned this from daddy um pastor deboe you know he shared with us the the what god told him what i when god took him to the side he had a dream it was by the seaside or something like that and god said write your name and then god said wipe it out and god told him you know the minute you know you disobey me or something like that that is how i will wipe out your <laughs> that was very scary i can tell you that you know so um so pride is when what we start thinking that this is about us 
how many people like us, you know, how many people are following us, how many people, you know, uh, how many members do we have, how many parishes do we have, how many things we have, how many, when you start thinking about that in relation to yourself, that is pride. And we need to be careful. I was discussing with somebody recently and they were, you know, we're talking about church planting. And so I was sharing that one of the things that really uh, gets, you know, that I don't think we should be doing is be talking about we've got, you know, we are, we've got 1000 parishes or we've got 600 parishes. I'm like, that is not what is going to give us performance uh, 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 indicator in heaven. God is not going to say, how many parishes did you, did you open? God is going to say, how many souls did you win? How many souls did you, you know, turn to Christ? So I, so I was discussing with that, that I would prefer rather than, you know, people just saying, you know, we've got, we're opening so many parishes. Talk about how many people, how many souls have been won to Christ? Look at uh, uh, Rian Bonke, they would say we've, you know, 80 million people have signed off for Christ. That for me, I think, because the Bible says that there's rejoicing in heaven when one soul turns to the Lord. It didn't say when you've expanded parishes or you are in so many countries in the world. It's how many souls have been won into Christ. So, so we need to be, I am very careful, you know, in terms of things that the, the, the outcome I'm looking for so with so with we can um, with with my friends my uh, partners people that um, that we're doing the work together I'm very clear that look it's not the number of people we need to make sure that we are reaching the people that God has put you know as giving us so that means we can't just say oh okay because um, um, likes and and numbers doesn't matter so we don't have to do anything hi sister kemi that is not what i'm saying but what i'm saying is whatever you know my being here my doing this is not about wanting you know to have ten thousand, you know people watching this is about wanting to make sure that i'm able to reach the people that god has already ordained that this program would impact their life and hopefully you know they will turn to christ or turn back to christ and i want to trust the lord that is going to affect that so some of the um principles um for me over the year especially with we can and we can has been going now for 12 years by the grace of god you know it's been you know it's been a journey many times you know we've had to spend our money we've had support you know um i remember total women um leadership conferences in south africa when i moved to the uk i was going every year uh, to south africa and sometimes we'll have 20 people attend, you know, after flying all the way, but I give God all the glory for that. And for we can now, you know, the way God has expanded. In fact, two years ago, I was like, oh my word, <laughs> God, <laughs> how am I going to do this? And this year, God has given me, you know, um, an helper. So we've got the Total Women Leadership Conference. We've got the um, Excellence in Life Mentoring Program for Young People. Now that is even growing exponentially. We've got, you know, we've got, we call it EIL. We've got EIL in Sierra Leone, in Tanzania, in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Uganda. And we're going to, you know, be having um, a few more countries. So we've got young adults in Africa that, you know, we're mentoring. We've also got mentors all over the world by God's grace. You know, we're doing, you know, um, African leadership conference, you know, um, thank you COVID-19 for giving us that opportunity, you know, to, to actually do it on Zoom and reach more people. Not only that, we've started the um, masterclass leadership program. We had, 
you know we've got the first students who are helping us to pilot it last year the plan is that we will have you know um, a, a, a an 18 month leadership uh, master class um, going forward you know god is doing fantastic things um, in 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 that space we are continue the leadership training so there's quite a lot that god is doing and reaching different people you know because he's the ceo and because he's the coefficient of the equation or the variable of my life so i just want to quickly share thank you you know uh, it would be great if you are watching just type what is the equation that you will use for good success what is the equation you will use for good success and we let me just go back to joshua in the case study so um god was telling joshua in the case study some of the you know variables that god used um of course god encouraged him in terms of his character to be strong and courageous god spoke about you know being careful to obey all the instructions that he was given god also told him about you know studying the book of instruction that's joshua 179 in new living transition studying the book of instruction the bible and god also told him to meditate on it day and night and to obey everything that was written in in it and then you will prosper and be successful so that is from um, the case study of joshua okay so um and and from what i was saying i i was i already shared that my own equation is a coefficient if question so god in all the variables god times my family god times my career god times my uh, the ministry is giving me god times my friend so god in every variable um, um of my life and it's only when i take god out of that um, uh, equation let me do it this, the positive way is when god is in that you know uh, um, equation of my life that i will achieve good success so what will be your own uh, uh equation if you can we can share it in 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 the chat box while i just you know um share again um just to summarize um from the experience of we can we can leadership institute um i just want to you know again you know pull out some of the principles that helped me and is helping me thank you sir daddy michael thank you for watching um the first one that is helping me is studying and to seek wisdom from the word of god studying to seek wisdom from the word of god um in everything in everything even in my in my in my work you know i uh many times you know i just started a new job um but over the length of my career in the last you know 15 years before meetings i pray during meetings i pray <laughs> I ask the Holy Spirit to help me, all right? You know, um, and and looking in the Word of God, you know, last last week we spoke about identity. Looking, knowing that God has made me, has called me. He said, "I'm the salt." I, I stand on that word. I'm like, God, you've put me in this place. I am the salt. There must be a, there must be a difference because I'm here because I'm the salt. There must be a difference. And the second principle for me is partnering with the Holy Spirit. Ah, you know, uh, I, I pray the Holy Spirit is going to give us the the study of himself in this program. We have, There's nothing without the Holy Spirit. Over the years, I think it's only for me in the maybe the last five years that I've learned to accept the voice of the holy spirit in me it's not over the years i've recognized you know how the holy spirit but when i say accept so for example i know that how the holy spirit talk to me if i there's something i don't know anything or i don't you know i don't have a clue and also because i write i mean if 
um, you you know me, you know I I write a lot, you know whether it's blog, whether it's whatever, and I've realized that in the morning the Holy Spirit talks to me because a lot of what I write is not from me. Me, what do I know? I don't know anything, you know. But I will get download for me from the Holy Spirit in the morning. Initially, you know, I will. I will, I will get it and then that's it. Then I've learned and when somebody, I was at a conference because I was thinking, okay, I need to get a, write it down. Then I was at a conference and the pastor mentioned it and I started doing it where I have, not only do I have my iPad, I have a notebook by my bedside. And when the Holy Spirit wakes me up early in the morning and I start getting that download, no matter how sweet that <laughs> sleep is, I've learned I will wake up and I will type. Then I, will, I can go back to sleep. Then in the morning, I will come back to it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what is this? this is, you know, this is something else. Um, if I don't download it, you know, I will not get the whole essence of it. I will get some bits and pieces, but I will not get the whole essence of it. So I have to wake up and, and, and write it. So that partnership with the Holy Spirit is so important. And I also learned from a book by Young Cho. I can't remember. I think something, something, Holy Spirit, you know, and that also transformed the way I, I think about the Holy Spirit, the partnership with the Holy Spirit. You know, look for the book Young Cho um, on, on Holy Spirit and I'm sure other um um, uh, books as well. The the Holy Spirit will just you know it will give you ideas. It will give you in, for inspiration, you know, and then that is it. And in everything, in everything, in everything. And um, last year we had some some something happen in in my you know life happens, and I was like, okay, I had a view, and then when the Holy Spirit spoke. You know, and when the Holy Spirit spoke, you know, you have speaks, you will know because it will be so totally different to what you were thinking. The first time the Holy Spirit, you know, spoke to me like that very clear, clearly, it was in, in a, 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 a discipline, disciplinary issue at work. You know, the person was on the wrong and, you know, this was years ago, you know, over, you know, 10 years ago. And... And I was like, you know, no, we are going to take this action. Look, when the Holy Spirit spoke to me, Holy Spirit said, I know I'm digressing, so yeah. The Holy Spirit said, have you shown our love? I, I, you know, have you shown our love? What action have you taken? And I can tell you that day I was crying. I, when we got to the disciplinary uh, uh, process, I had to just, first of all, you know, say, so let's stop. I want to apologize. And, you know, that sort of ended the whole thing. But that's the story for another day. Let me keep on because of our time. Partnership with the Holy Spirit, keeping our mind and eyes on Jesus. That, you know, whatever we're doing is not about us. It's not about us. You know, I always encourage that, you know, sometimes when we stress so much about ministry, we stress so much about, you know, church, we stress so much... It's like, this is not our work. You know, why are we stressing? When Jesus Christ has said, put all your stress on me. So I don't stress about, you know, about a lot of things about my life now. No, especially ministry. I said, God, this is your work. Yeah, you work it out. You are the CEO. The other thing is working with others. You know, working with others. We, I do not know it all. I cannot do the work of... We can by myself. And I think many leaders, you know, they, they, you know, they, they get this wrong. Where you think because you are a leader, because you've got a position, that means that you know everything. And you don't know everything. We have to work with people because, you know, you have, I have bias. I have blind spots and mm -hmm. I have weakness. So I've learned, you know, when God bring people into my, into my life, apart from the one I pray for, right? When God also bring people into my life that I wasn't even, you know, asking for, I've learned to, 
you know, first of all, you know, identify, you know, and, and see their gift. First of all, I don't rush to give people response. Oh, I might, I might delegate some small things just to see how committed the person might be. But when I see the gift in, 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 in that person, you know, I'm very happy to empower people. You know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I try not to be, you know, um, I'm the title holder, so I, it must be about me. Of course, the vision cannot be shaken. God can never be taken out of it. But anything else, you know, we, collab we collaborate. But being clear that we put God first, center, and around. Then we can create and innovate together as led by the Holy Spirit. And we get feedback and we work, work with others. And it's really, really fantastic. I've met some fantastic people with gifts that I don't have, you know, and I thank God for that. You know, even the one I have, if I meet somebody that has it as well, you know, I'll rather delegate, right? Delegate um, and, and help people grow. So I try to apply, you know, these principles, you know, seeking the word, word, uh, word of God for wisdom for every area um, and partnering with Holy Spirit. And that is a very, very practical partner, partnership with the Holy Spirit. Third, keeping my mind and eyes on Jesus. Everything I do is about him. If it's not about him, you know, I don't want to know. So maybe it's the place where I am right now, but I... I and because of time, so I am not doing anything that does that would not bring glory to God and would not, you know, go towards winning so and then working with others, collaborating with others, you know, um, uh, um, you know, together innovating and creating and, and being, you know, a uh, 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 driver of, of the um, uh, vision. So I apply it and Yes, and it's also exciting to see what God is going to do as well. So, which is why we cannot leave him out of the equation. It is great to have God in every area of our life, you know, uh, and God has promised, Exodus 33, 14, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. You know, if God is not in that e equation, you know, there won't be rest. You know, there won't be rest, will be stressed, will be, you know, will be so worried, will be, you know, I've mentioned, I've already said that, you know, God needs to go with us. I, I'm, because of our time, I hope, you know, there's, there are things that you've taken um, today. Uh, we've been talking about equation of life for good success. And I've been saying that, you know, from my own experience with God, God is the coefficient of every variable of my life you know wherever you know family children you know career um, ministry god is the coefficient it's not the denominator or numerator or the multiplier is the coefficient and so i just want to encourage us are you a christian and you are struggling right now everything is you know so many things you know in in some areas of your life is just overwhelming it's never too late to go back to the beginning so i would just encourage take a pause you know there's a book called the pause principle take a pause spend time to hear see know about the what and the why i do this a lot whenever i'm feeling overwhelmed with so many things i just say you know what today i'm doing nothing I'm pausing, right, to get my on my my focus sharper. So just take a pause and ask yourself, what are you doing and why are you doing it? What are you doing? Why are you doing it? Prayerfully ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Then rewrite the equation of your life with God as coefficient of every variable. And know that it's a journey. It's a journey, but you are going to start seeing changes immediately. And for this, you need a personal relationship with Jesus. 
because it's Jesus that is that coefficient, right? So it's never too late to accept Jesus Christ into your heart and as Lord and Savior. And it's very simple. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, raised from the dead, mm -hmm. and confess him as Lord and Savior. And start that wonderful journey with him today. And if you've accepted Jesus Christ because of this program or hearing my voice or seeing my face, <laughs> please get in touch. Please get in touch. I'm so excited that you've done that. Inbox me, email me, you know, give me a shout out. You know, my email is info at adiolakitoye.com. I, I want to, you know, join you in prayer. But most importantly, I'm going to be very selfish now. My resolution this year is to glorify the Lord. And my key performance indicator is to win souls to the kingdom, to bring as many people back to God as possible. Because without him, you know, we can do nothing. But with him, we will have not only good success, excellent success. So thank you for joining today. Um, I totally appreciate it. Join me next Sunday as we go Practical Christianity. And please buy Taiwo's um, single. It's taiwo.music. It's on um, all the Spotify and all the online platform. Please buy, support her. She's a lovely, lovely lady and see you. Mm.